Hello and welcome to this Valley of Welshness and Shopper of the Future Needs presentation. My name is Sophie Cahoon. I run my own business, Category Insight, and I also work with Brookdale Consulting, who help manage and create the Welsh Government Food and Drink Insight programme. Today, I'm going to be sharing a couple of things, um, a piece of research around the value of Welshness, and also a major piece around Shopper of the Future. And finally, I'll finish with some implications for farming. Hi, and welcome to this Value of Welshness and what Shoppers of the Future will need presentation. My name is Sophie Cahoon and I run my own business, but also work with Brookdale Consulting and help manage and create the Insight programme for the food and drink team of Welsh Government. Today, I'm going to be sharing some of the latest insight around the value of Welshness within Wales and also outside of Wales, and also a significant piece of new Welsh Government food and drink team research around the shopper of the future. I'll finish with some thoughts and some implications towards farming. So let's start with the value of Welshness. When we talk to English shoppers about what Welshness means to them, the first thing they talk about is the landscape, naturalness and freshness being at the heart of what Welshness is about. They talk about beaches, mountain windy roads, villages and small towns, fresh air, clean, no crowds, nice shops and cafes, Snowdonia mountain peaks, the outdoors life, chilled and relaxed. Wet rain, lots of rain, that's why it's so green. And the number one association when English shoppers think about Wales is lamb, and they view Welsh as the lamb experts. They talk about a quieter, more relaxed pace of life, human scale, family farms, craft, artisan, or not mega. English shoppers associate Wales with holiday happiness and they feel physically and emotionally close to Wales. This means that products in Wales can feel local to many English shoppers. We know that localness has been on the rise in recent years and Covid has really accelerated this and the opportunity for artisanal Welsh products outside of Wales is growing. So when we asked Welsh and English shoppers in a survey, what does Welsh food and drink mean to you? And on average, more than half of shoppers across England and Wales think that Welsh food and drink is better quality, better tasting, fresher and natural. And in categories like dairy, meat and veg, which are closer to the countryside, these figures were even higher. And in the case of meat, we can see that nearly two thirds of shoppers think that food from Wales means better quality. Then when we asked a similar question on a global survey in early 2020 for those shoppers that actually knew about Wales, then Welsh food is also seen as natural, better trusted and better quality. 88% of global shoppers seeing food from Wales of being high quality. Two thirds of shoppers said, I trust food from Wales more than food than many other countries in the world. All this insight just points to the fact that food from Wales is seen as a trusted and of high quality and taste. And at the heart of this trust is our dairy, meat and vegetable products. So what does really mean when shoppers want to go and buy something? In 2017, we did the first Value of Welshness research and we showed shoppers in Wales a picture of Welsh milk versus an identical bottle of milk but with a GB flag on it and a picture of milk with no country of origin, giving shoppers the choice of buying Welsh, British or no country of origin on a very simple basis. And we asked them, which of these products would you prefer to buy? And in Wales, it's not really a surprise that nearly nine out of 10 shoppers said they'd prefer to buy the Welsh milk versus the British milk versus any other country's milk. And then across the meat and dairy, on average, 8 out of 10 Welsh shoppers would prefer to choose Welsh. And even when you look at the pie, which you can see on the right hand side of this slide with a steak filling, more than half would prefer to buy the pie if it was Welsh steak within it. So we know that given a choice, shoppers within Wales on like for like products would prefer to choose Welsh. But obviously brands make a difference. And for example, if you took a Cadbury's Dairy Milk Bar versus a chocolate bar and a Welsh flag on it, it has a very different set of values for shoppers. And many would choose the mega Cadbury's brand just because they associate with that brand and that flavour of chocolate. 
So we wanted to understand that when you just add Welshness to a brand, does it encourage shoppers to buy that product? So we tested 12 different brands from middle price brands to premium brands. And we asked, does seeing Welshness on a pack such as this make you any more likely to buy these products? And seven out of 10 Welsh shoppers said, yes, seeing Welshness on packs such as this makes me more likely to buy the product. And it was seven out of 10 for mid price products, and it was a little bit less for premium products. We asked the same question in England as well. And does Welshness on packs such as this make you more likely to buy products? And a third of English shoppers said, yes, they were more likely to buy the product. And even those who didn't say yes, they were ambivalent with only one or two percent saying, no, it made them less likely to buy the product. So what this really means is that Welshness can really only add value to products sold in England. It does no harm to the pack and it does no harm to products to add Welshness to products. In fact, for a third of shoppers, it can motivate them to be more likely to purchase the products. So overall, I suppose Welshness does portray to shoppers better quality better taste, naturalness and freshness in Wales and England and also across the globe where Wales is known. Adding Welshness to packs improves the chances that shoppers might buy a product and Welshness therefore adds value to Welsh products. So if we have a business that is either customer facing or we have products that we sell on to consumers, then talking about our story and our Welshness can add value to that proposition. So what about the future? What about shopper behaviour and how our world is going to change? And what the implications for us in Wales and the farming community are? In the last year, we have commissioned a significant piece of work with Cantar's Futures Consulting, a world-renowned futures agency, about what we can expect in the next three to five years. But before I talk about these trends, I'd like to share a short video
The first of the six macro trends is fluid lives. And this is about going from the feeling of being sort of constantly time pressured and having to juggle new connections and shifting routines. And I suppose if anything, this has been really exasperated for most families during COVID-19 with people trying to work and manage homeschooling and home working, and then also try and create some form of social life, usually through the internet. But this change will mean people will move to a much more fluid living where data and on-demand internet services really fit into their lives so that the world just moves with their life rather than them trying to manage lots of different things. You can sort of think about applications like Alexa or Siri and taking a much bigger role in people's lives and certainly shoppers. And shoppers being able to order almost anything they want through these devices. For example, Siri, order next week's grocery shopping. Please order my basic basket. Also, please order some premium red wine I might like. So the technology will help to automate many tasks in life and almost predict what shoppers might want and make it easier for shoppers to have a much more fluid life. Sustainable responsibility. This is where sustainability has really moved from an environmental side issue, followed by some, to really impacting many consumer choices across all realms of life and sustainability will become part of the mainstream conversation and built into government regulation and standing operating procedures in business. No matter what product we make, whether it's machinery or produce fabulous Welsh lamb, the impact of the whole product will become under scrutiny from a sustainability point of view. No longer will producers be able to fudge with smoke and mirrors. Due to the digital age, transparency is here and shoppers and consumers are super well informed. We know that this month is Veganery Month and last year we saw significantly more consumers adopting flexitarian diets, actually reducing meat and eating more plant-based meals. Plant-based protein production is an area of potential opportunity for farmers. However, currently, overall meat consumption in the UK is pretty flat. We know that the climate anti-meat agenda is just too simplistic, and the argument for locally produced hill meats is a completely different picture. Consumers are starting to latch onto this, and this month we've seen the launch of Regannery, Regenerative Agriculture January, focusing more about biodiversity, championing of the UK grass-fed system, farming as guardians of the environment, and low-impact farming within the UK versus other countries. This could drive more interest from consumers in localness and supporting UK and Wales farmers. If anything has changed in the last 12 months through this COVID pandemic, then the use of digital technology has probably changed the most. We've seen the digital expansion going from a lack of available connectivity from some parts of society and economic sectors to large scale connectivity and improved infrastructure to hard reach sectors and demographics. Rural areas will probably benefit the most from better accessibility and connections. The growth of e-commerce has been massive and distinctly fueled by the digital expansion. In food, we've seen sales grow online more than 90% year on year with and at capacity for available slots. Most of this growth has really been through the major mods, Tesco, Sainsbury's, Asda, Morrison's and of course Ocado. But for e-commerce provides new opportunities for small producers to connect to local markets and further afield markets. From a consumer perspective, the digital expansion means that consumers are demanding things faster and more immediately. They want products right here, right now. A great example is the new app developed by Sainsbury's that when you go shopping, as you walk into the store, it says, I see you're in store. I understand it may be your husband's birthday tomorrow. I know you like a steak on a Friday night. Uh, We've got a special offer in um, aisle seven on premium steak. steak. And by the way, your special Chardonnay wine is on hand um, and we can give you that at a discount as well. And here's some chocolates in, in aisle 11 guiding you round the store to a special meal for your special occasion because they know it's your husband's birthday. This interactive ability using big data by major corporations and talking to individuals could change significant habits. But the digital expansion is not just about e-commerce, it's also about sophisticated automation, 
and biotech advances. I was at a conference 18 months ago when someone talked about the controlled atmosphere vineyard, where they could grow future grapes to match specific vintage or wine. Imagine how that could revolutionise and potentially even devalue the premium wine market. In the same way, people are developing cultured meat. And if the economies of scale and environmental uh, objectives deliver, then cultured meat could affect the meat market. This is really a, a really early days in this area though. And to overcome massive consumer scepticism over chemical meat, I think is going to be hard to achieve, certainly in the short, uh, short term. We already have a culture where starting to prioritise experiences over ownership and moving towards brands that are more than just the product that they're offering. What we'll see is people prioritising experiences that are just more intentional, more enriching and helping people squeeze the most out of their lives and inject more joy. Sharing of experience has now become the norm through social media and people want both physical and virtual experience. Shoppers or consumers will want to be part of the story of what they're involved with. Whether you produce a product, a service or an experience, shoppers will want to be involved more if they can. If we have a holiday cottage business or a B&B farm in Wales, then the ability to participate in activities on the farm will really enrich people's holidays. Actually being able to visit cows, walking in the fields with sheep, just being able to roam freely amongst fields or even a guided farm walk could really add value to any holiday purchase and potentially evenly could be sold as an add-on. In Wales, we really do have some of the most beautiful countryside, some of the greatest beaches in the world, and fabulous places to eat and adventures to take part in. Sharing this with our customers wherever we interact with them and letting them share this with their friends, the great things that they can participate in, will only add to our story and our provenance about Welsh farming. Trust and identity. Really here we're talking about the challenges to traditional generic labels as the people who increasingly are powered to express different aspects of their identity to really break down barriers to where people are able to fulfill any aspect of their identity whenever wherever they are. This has really been shown by the grassroots movements this year exemplified by the Me Too movement which has really impacted every major organisation or Greta Thunberg, who became the face of the young people demanding action on climate change. And recently, the Black Lives Matter campaign, highlighting generations of institutionalised subconscious racism. We expect consumers and shoppers to champion their roots wherever they come from, reject many generalisations and support their heritage. If anything, during COVID, the importance of your local community and supporting local has become more important. Certainly in the short term, we think localness and localism would be one of the things that shoppers in Wales will regard as more important. So supporting farmers, supporting local producers will be on the rise. But as I said earlier, transparency is the key. With trust and identity, then so does our responsibility increase, just to make sure we say what we say is what we do. Living well really comes from a position of knee-jerk reaction to health to a desire just to live better, not just longer. So we are set to see consumers adopting more sophisticated approaches to understanding their own individual wellbeing goals. There will be a need for more proactive approach to health as we get older and communicable diseases increasingly spread. There'll be a greater emphasis on prioritizing health, both from a mental point of view and also a physical point of view. Technology is playing a bigger role here with apps both to track your fitness and your medical um, ailments. AI medical firms are saying that they are nearly as good as diagnosis as GPs and this whole industry around preventative medicine is set to explode. There is significant talk about gut health at the moment and for natural food less processed as well. As well as the drive for natural less processed foods and the trends of probiotic foods like sauerkraut, we are seeing new brands such as Huel and Renourish launch to optimise nutrition and simple convenient solutions. Now for younger consumers, fitness has now become a status symbol whereby they share their achievements online with new industries such as Athy Leisure and brands such as Gymshark Clothing doing phenomenally well. Covid has driven a return to nature and a love of outdoors to help physical and mental health. 
The role of farmers as custodians and access to our natural environment and producing natural wholesome products will increase in importance to shoppers. Digital is going to affect most aspects of life. It enables shoppers to see that we are being transparent. Digital also means a massive rise in e-commerce and the opportunity for farmers or groups of farmers to sell directly to consumers. But also for us to tell our stories through social media, but we will have to work together to be seen. Fluid Live means that we just have to make things easy for shoppers if we can. If we have any digital selling to shoppers, it has to be super simple and intuitive. Trust and identity, as well as promoting diversity and the growth of grassroots movements, could lead to shoppers championing and being connected to their roots. In Wales, the desire for Welshness is as strong as ever, and we are seen as the experts in lamb. This community connection and localism gives us an opportunity to sell more Welsh. Sustainability is more important. We can champion our low environmental impact farming and help drive biodiversity. We have to be super transparent to prove that we are developing and producing products in an environmentally friendly manner to prove that we are living our responsibility. Elevated experiences mean people prioritising experience and wanting more out of life than just products. When we add to our products with experience, we will add value. Living well means shoppers become proactive about health, both physical and mental. And in Wales, we can really help people get back to nature, champion the outdoors, feed naturally produced foods, all of which will make everyone live well. I just want to finish by saying, the world is changing fast. The pandemic, the rise of digital and the effect of climate change are at the top of the agenda. When shoppers think about Wales, they talk about the countryside, the outdoors, small farms, and as farming community, we are custodians of the countryside. English shoppers think of us as the lamb experts, and on average, more than half of shoppers across England and Wales think Welsh is better quality, better tasting, fresher and natural. Welshness adds value. Diolch. Thank you.